It is Thursday, my dudes, and you know what that means. It is time once again to revisit Adventure Woods, and whoa, why did I start the video off by saying it is Thursday, my dudes, rather than it is Wednesday, my dudes, because is this not a series that is uploaded on Wednesdays? Well, if my track record is anything to go by, I'll have just forgotten to post this on Wednesday again. Uh, yeah, I did a back-to-back. Uh, those who remember the ancient times of November 2022, um, there were two episodes I published back to back that were uh, not on a Wednesday. I just woke up on Thursday morning and I was like, oh no, I forgot. So I had to quickly publish it uh, on a Thursday. I know there are a couple of people in like far uh, western time zones, like California and Hawaii, possibly, I think. I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, some people it's still Wednesday, but for most people it's Thursday, so, uh, apologies. Hopefully I got it right and it is, in fact, a Wednesday, but then now the intro is wrong. So, really, I've not helped myself out there at all, have I? Now, speaking of not helping myself out at all there, I've been kind of, reg uh, not regretting, uh, dreading doing this commentary and editing this episode because this is kind of like a bit of an admin episode. It has no focal point. Uh, I do so much different little bits and bobs that I was putting off and procrastinating. I decided to just knock it all out in one go and end up with this kind of like 20 minute long episode of just stuff. So literally got no idea what the thumbnail is going to be. Probably the uh, Kraken ride, the pirate ship ride, that's probably going to be the thumbnail, but I don't know. Now I'm just correcting the car park here. I'll, I'll cover this in a second, but there's going to be a little crossfade in a second. Uh, here we are. I spent a long time rerouting the monorail to accommodate this now larger car park, but if you agree with me, it doesn't look very good, the monorail. So this monorail layout is not going to stay, hence why I didn't showcase the, uh, the the reconstruction of it. But I will address the new car park that I built in episode 8. So there's a little flashback. Episode 8 was one of the ones where I said it is Wednesday, my dudes, and in fact published the video on a Thursday. So yeah, this was all, this was all planned. <laughs> um... Yeah, I've decided to expand the car park because the original car park I built in episode 8, I was really happy with it. It's my favourite car park I've ever built in Planet Coaster. Uh, but it was a bit small, which didn't really matter at the time because at the time the theme park was always going to be a small theme park with a small budget and a small scope. And I quickly realised, I've said this story a lot now in this episode, in this series, that uh, my my ambitions and my my love of Planet Coaster, they changed all of that. So now this is actually quite a big park. So really, the car park needed to be extended. So that's now in its more or less final form. There's another little car park uh, associated with the hotel that's going to get built in one of the final episodes. Uh, so that's going to be a small car park there. But for the most part now, the main car park is done. Um, the monorail will be changed and made to look decent. But for now, it's a decent enough placeholder. And now I'm just adding the little footpath around the park. Well, I don't want to say footpath, I mean road. It's a it's a path in Planet Coaster, but it's meant to serve as a road. To not only border off the park and set myself a boundary saying, this is going to be the outskirts of the park. Do not build beyond this point. This is how we're going to limit this and not let the, the series go on for 70 episodes like Velocity Lake ends up going on for. This is going to be what sets everything. And it also allows me to kind of, when I'm building rides and stuff, think about how they're going to be integrated into the backstage of the theme park. I've said before, uh, one of the things I've never liked about any of my, you know, for, uh, or other Planet Coaster parks is that the backstage doesn't really integrate very well into the park. The closest I came to perfection, and I'm not saying this is perfect by any means, but the closest I came to perfection was Velocity Lake, but just... I don't know, parts of the road didn't really, they weren't very natural and it was just, it was alright, it wasn't perfect though. And I like to think that this is pretty good. I know it's not perfect, like there are parks like Bro Nation, what's it, No Name Landia? How on earth anyone can top that? Well, people probably have and I just am very ignorant. But for me, I looked at that thinking, that just looks like a real theme park. Like they've clearly thought of everything. And I'm always chasing that unobtainable goal of trying to make a park as good as No Name Landia basically. Uh, so uh, yeah, it, to that end, I decided to try and build the road and say now I can actually consciously link roller coasters and all that up to that road now that the road is there. And uh, you might have seen I placed a sort of diversion on that road towards the back of the uh, BNM flying coaster, the Dragon Rider, uh, just so that there is an access point to the service uh, uh, what's it called? The service shed. There's a way for like a truck to go up to it and take the cars off and onto the road. And then, so now that's all nicely integrated because that roller coaster was a little bit tricky because it's kind of in the middle of the park. So I wasn't really sure how I was going to get it 
accessible to the backstage. And, uh, well, now I've just done that. So it was all fine in the end. Uh, now I'm just going back. See what I mean? It's really hard to talk about the footage on screen because I'm just constantly doing different things. I started this sentence with the uh, intention to start saying, look, now I'm building the car park again. But I'm not. I've changed once more. And now I'm building, like, some sides to this bridge. I mean, there was just loads of things. And anyone that plays Planet Coaster knows exactly what I'm, I'm talking about here. That you just start a project, then you get distracted, and then you go and do something else, and you're like, oh, I need to do that thing, but I'll do it later. And then you do something else, like, oh, I've got to do that thing, I'll do it later. But whilst you were doing other things, you said that for other stuff, and then you have, like, loads of little I's to dot and T's to cross. And I just said, you know what? I, I, I'm guessing this was filmed, like, a couple of months ago, so I don't really remember exactly what I was doing. Uh, so I kind of said, you know what? I'm just going to quickly, whilst we're at a point, I've just built Phantom Road, the park's in a pretty good state. I've set the boundary for myself as to where the park's outskirts going to be. Let's just make sure that everything I've built so far is done. And I don't need to keep on like flip-flopping between projects. And I don't think I even achieved that goal because I think the Ferris wheel is still yet to be completed or like, you know, made to look acceptable. Yeah, the Ferris wheel is a flat ride, right? There isn't that much to do. It's just integrating the queue line and just making it like blend into the park a bit more naturally. I, I think... Like, you know, it's one of those things. And now, look, we've once again shifted to uh, going back to that backstage area of the B&M Flying Coaster. So, uh, yeah, I try to sort of make the border of this asphalt area look like the same, look the same as the border of the path that I used to build the road around the park. And I kind of made that... Uh, like a, a railway crossing using the concrete coaster support piece. And I think it came out pretty well, actually. So I was quite happy with that. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm just bordering off this tarmac. And then now I've done that, we can sort of dress it up a bit more nicely. Really, really refine that edge. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty nice. And I wanted to make sure that this whole road going to the backstage of that castle was completely invisible to the park guests. And I don't think it's... Well, obviously, if you're on the ride, you can see it. Uh, there's probably a couple of rides where it's visible. But from the ground paths where you're in the themed areas and you're in maximal immer immersion um you can't see it there here you can see you're placing a drop tower that's not going to stay it's gone now uh there's this kind of bit so you've got the bridge going over the little river here and then you've got the wildwoods roller coaster but then looking to the left you can kind of just see the the offices of the part of the park and it's the backstage area it looks a bit ugly i wanted something to kind of occlude that i know you can still see it when you're crossing the bridge because there's water and i can't build anything on the water so we have to accept that guests understand that there is an actual backstage to this place uh they aren't they are they are still in fact in kansas they're not in uh uh, uh oz <laughs> what i was trying to think of the name of the world in the wizard of oz and i was like oh yeah it's just oz isn't it because it's the wizard of yeah, anyway regardless uh yeah so uh but i wanted to kind of like not have it completely it would look like an eyesore basically if it was visible for a lot of the time so i just wanted to cover it up as much as i could so to that end i built a pirate ship ride now what is it about a pirate ship ride for a couple of reasons first of all i just wanted to but also many moons ago i made a queue time information screen you go into a theme park and there's always those boards around the park saying what the queue time is for certain rides well i made one of those for adventure woods and at the time i had not built any roller coasters at all so i just sort of made up some names and one of those names was like uh, the Kraken, or like Kraken, because so, it's like Kerbal Space Program, right? Like, it's, it's back to our roots, you know? The series of people actually watch on this channel. So let's have a, get, let's have a ride called The Kraken. And uh, I felt that the pirate ship ride would be the best ride for that, because it's like... I don't need to explain that. You guys probably understand why. Uh, and I wanted to use the Kraken animatronic, but the Kraken animatronic is, like, really OTT. Like, it could exist in real life, but only in, like, a Disney park or a, a Universal Studios or a very ultra-high budget park. Like, for a park like this, which is... Not low budget, but it's not high budget either. They wouldn't be able to afford a complex animatronic that is the animatronic Kraken in Planet Coaster. So instead, I just disabled its animation. It's just going to be a rigid statue, and that's how it's going to be. So, um, so yeah, that's the Kraken there. So that's why it's kind of all clipped into the ground. Anyone that plays this game is like, why has he done that? Because the Kraken moves. Well, it won't move in this save. I've I've made sure it, it won't. So that's... Uh, 
that's that. Yeah, don't worry, guys. I, I took the exciting animatronic and made it boring, so don't worry. <laughs> and then I just thought I'd litter the uh, the footprint of the pirate ship ride with, like, some pirate-themed clutter, just to make it look a bit nicer. And, uh, yeah, the footprint of the ride is really big. That's kind of a pet peeve of, like, well, not really a pet peeve. It's just a peeve shared by many players of Planet Coasters that the footprints of, especially the roller coaster stations, but also a lot of the flat rides, have really big footprints. Ah, uh, maybe that's not fair with the pirate ship ride because it is fairly constrained. But there are, it is, I just feel like it's a bit bigger than it really needs to be. Uh, so I thought I'd, I'd fill out some of the dead space with some pirate clutter. And then I put some pirate clutter in the queue. And I thought that, um, that archway piece, that pirate themed archway, it works really well with the pirate ship ride, I like to think. You might disagree, but I like to think it, I think it looks pretty good actually. And then, uh, yeah, I'm still placing pirate ship clutter well, see, now I'm like a loss because I was like, oh, it's really hard to commentate directly over this footage because I'm just changing what I'm doing all of the time. But now I'm not. I'm just doing the same thing over and over. And there you go. There's a little halfway point. Go and you pause the video right now. Go grab yourself a cup of tea or a beer if that's more your thing. And uh, you can return and we can do something else. And yes, that was a Green Ham Gaming reference. I love that channel so much. Uh, they used to upload a lot in like 2014, 2015. They used to upload loads of things about low spec gaming and just, I don't know, just relaxing videos of like very low spec things. Because went back, I subscribed to them when I was a student. So I had like no money at all. And I had a terrible second hand laptop that was made, I think, in like 2012. And uh, that was the laptop, by the way, that I started this PC gaming YouTube channel on. So if you any, if you watch any of my videos from 2015 and they look terrible, that's because uh, I was gaming on a uh, terrible laptop from 2012. And but I, I watched a lot of channels like Greenham Gaming of like low spec gaming uh, just to feel kind of like justified and like, yeah, these are some things I could do with a computer that isn't very powerful. Obviously, now I am a professional YouTuber. TM, I have a really good gaming PC, so uh, don't relate. But I still enjoy the Greenham gaming videos. Like, there's just something really fun about them. Like, it's not even, it's not like a, like a, like a Linus Tech Tips video, and like I love Linus Tech Tips for what it's worth. But like those videos is very much like going into the specs and like talking about all the technological stuff and running benchmarks. This channel is like. Here's a PC that I just found in some abandoned office. Um, we're going to see if it can run Fallout 4 and like what it looks like. And it's just really relaxing, like the tone. Like there was a running joke where like he'd show the PCs, but there'd always be like a cigarette in the... Um in the, in the disc tray, like the PC would be smoking whilst he was talking about it. It's just great. They're just fun videos. And it's also the channel that introduced me to Caravan Palace. Uh, they had a video, I think, about the PS3. Uh, and they used the song Lone Digger by Caravan Palace. The best Caravan Palace song, everyone agrees with me. Not a controversial statement. And I was like, this, is all, this song, this song slaps. This song is a bop. <laughs> so I just said, I'm going to download every album this artist has made and uh, just listen to them. And none of their songs hold a candle to uh, Lone Digger. But, you know, they are these, they do, they make a lot of good songs regardless. Electro Swing, if you like that, and you don't know who Caravan Palace is, you don't exist. Nobody who likes Electro Swing doesn't know who Caravan Palace is, so it's fine. Uh, but, yeah, I, mean, I, say, I say Lone Digger has like, not, had, not been topped since, but I feel like their most recent album, Chronologic, has some pretty good songs on it as well and like chronologic that was like 2019 that was a scarily long time ago and oh i didn't talk about this oh it's probably gone now but i did i you, oh whatever you know you guys saw and you know what i'm like i don't talk about the footage until it's gone but i've divided the park up into different areas it's very common for theme parks to have different zones so like alton towers has the x sector and the I want to say Ugland. It's not been Ugland for like a decade, but that's, you know, that's how old I am. And uh, Forbidden Valley, I think as well. And like Disneyland all that have their own zones as well. I thought I'm going to put zones in this theme park, not just because, you know, that would be pretty cool, but also because on the uh, the queue line boards I built before I built anything else, um, they had like the name of the ride like the Kraken ride and Wicked Twister and then a zone that it was in to just sort of tell guests where that ride is. So you look at the queue line thing, it's like, oh, that ride's got a short queue, let's go there, let's go there. And then underneath the ride's name, it tells the guests where the ride is located. So I'm like, okay, I need to put zones in. And so I, I'd already decided that the central, so when I built that Photoshop document that's now on all the 
billboards in this park. I picked Central Springs as the central area where like the yellow Wicked Twister roller coaster is. So that was called Central Springs. And then the other one I think was called like Lost Forest. I already forgot. But you guys saw me build the sides, you know. Uh, Lost Forest or Dark Forest or something like that. And I feel like there's another one as well. Um... But, uh, oh, the plaza. The, the the plaza was the main area with the yellow. This is where I, we're in the plaza right now. I'm placing a chair swing ride in the plaza. And then the island with wild woods and the dragon rock, that's Central Springs. And then the ride area with, like, um uh, the, the purple phantom road roller coaster. And Vector, the roller coaster that's not been built yet. Uh, that's the Lost Forest. or uh, I think it's called the Lost Forest, isn't it? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Because we've moved along to that very area, whatever that area is called. Who knows? Mystery. <laughs> um, I'm just basically just dressing up the uh, the sun. <laughs> this is another thing. Where I'm like, I forgot what the name of this thing now. But it's the sundial, I think. But like this ride here. It's like a pirate ship ride, but like the carriage. It spins around. I'm just dressing this up to integrate it nicely into the park. It's got a round footprint, which is good because it means the footprint isn't oversized. Like it. The footprint is only slightly larger than the ride itself, but also like round footprints are quite hard to integrate into Planet Coaster Parks because the path tool is like not very good. So it's like you can't really build a perfectly round path around the round footprint. So it's like you kind of have to like fill in the gap between the ride and the pathway. But I think I did a pretty good job overall. Doesn't matter though because I've once again uh, past Matt has moved on it seems to doing something else. Oh, no, never mind. I'm back. I'm back at the uh building 122. And we're going to just carry on dressing up this flat ride and indeed the queue line that leads up to it. Um, so, yeah, what's going on with my life? Let's talk about that for a bit. Now we've got, like, four minutes left because I'm just going to give up talking about the footage on screen, uh, even though I haven't really talked about it directly for most of this video, but, like, I'm going to give up fully. You guys can see what's going on. What's going on with my life? Well, the sad moment, guys, today. Uh, it's Beth's birthday. Beth, my girlfriend, you know, she's probably watching this video with me right now, proof watching on our sofa. Hello, Beth. Um, <laughs> and also, I'm sorry. It's like, you know, 20 to 9 on a Sunday night. We're both starving and want dinner, and I'm sitting here. I've just finished editing space this week. Now I'm doing a commentary for Planet Coaster. So, uh, yeah, both are very ready for dinner at some point. But, yeah, I bought a, I bought a couple of bike helmets in a Black Friday sale. Uh, some really nice MIPS system helmets. If you're a cyclist, you know what that means. But it's basically like MIPS system helmets like they're a bit safer in theory so I, I bought a couple because normally they're quite expensive but like in black friday they, these ones are like really really cheap so i'm gonna get these uh but then i bought i put mine on so i bought one for myself and i was like i should probably get beth one as well right so i put mine on and it was like it was way too tight like it was so incredibly tight I'm like this is painful but then i looked at beth and i was like beth's is probably the right size but i don't know and i'm planning on giving this to beth for her birthday but that's like Oh, a few days, like a few weeks away. I'm not going to give away date of birth in this video. But like, um, it's a few weeks away. And I'm like, oh, I, I, I need to know if it's going to fit. So we, if we need to return it. So in the end, I just said to Beth, do you want an early birthday present, Beth? Uh, so I could just make sure I don't need to return it. And uh, she tried it on and it fit. It fit. So I didn't need to survive. Like, I need to buy something else for her birthday. So guys, if you have any suggestions of things to buy for Beth for her birthday, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, which is not going to help me because this video is actually going to be published after her birthday happens so um don't don't comment that actually that was that was a dumb that was a dumb thing to say i'm just uh i'm just really struggling it's been a really it's been a bit of a struggle you know if it wasn't obvious for me to make a commentary for this episode because it is just like an episode of me haphazardly building many different things and there's been no real focal point and so that that that, that that's the reality of the situation but next episode i promise is going to be better <laughs> I'm going to build a flat ride. Well, not a flat ride. Well, it is a flat ride, but it's got a custom track. It's a car ride. So, um, yeah, I look forward to that. And, um, yeah, sorry, guys. This this video has been a bit all over the place. It's not really had a real focal point, And I'm not... I'm not really that happy with the content. Like, I, I wanted my... I like these episodes to have a focal point and something. And this one I just had... I had no idea what to do. So, <laughs> when it came to the footage I had... Like, I showed you the footage in chronological order when I filmed it. I really should have thought things through at the time. Past Matt, how dare you? <laughs> but um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. and hope you enjoyed that POV that I just talked all the way through. Uh, but yeah, there are now some cards on screen, hopefully. And um, there are two videos that you might enjoy. Click them if you want. You don't have to. I'm not the police. And uh, 
yeah, uh, it is it is Thursday, my dudes. Yeah, uh, hopefully, it, hopefully you're watching this on a Wednesday. Like, comment, subscribe. Should have said that earlier. Oh, 